What's up everyone, it's your boy Francis and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be checking fear US Navy's 35,000 warships power or simply knowing as how the US Navy could win a war. So we're going to check that out. I know this is a bit different from regular but I'm very curious about this especially coming from Sierra Leone and now living in the US. So we're going to take, take a look at this, right? All right, let's get straight into it. The future of amphibious attack may cons Bro, that went straight into the water. That, those look like tanks. ...consist of thousands of disaggregated manned and unmanned surveillance boats, uh -huh. armor carrying connectors, minesweepers, and small attack vessels operating in tandem as the Navy and Marine Corps refine a new strategic approach and continue their pivot toward a new great power threat environment. Imagine that hitting you. That's a Swiss cheese. Turns your sweet cheese. The concept is to configure a dispersed yet networked fleet of next generation connectors and other similar boats launched from big deck amphibious motherships. The larger host ships are intended to operate in a command and control capacity while That's bringing crazy. sensors, long range fires, and fifth generation air support to the fight. Man, that's just incredible, like, how many stuff are out there right now. Woo! That's, that's a lot. That's intense. We envision fleets of smaller, multi-mission vessels operating with surface warfare leadership. People talk about a 355-ship Navy. How about a 35,000-ship Navy, Major General David Kaufman, Director of Naval that's Expeditionary crazy. Warfare, told an audience at the Surface Naval Association Symposium. Kaufman explained it as a family of combatant craft, manned and unmanned, integrated in a distributed maritime operation. Since God. potential adversaries now have longer range weapons, better sensors, targeting mm. technologies, and computers with that is true. processing speeds, amphibious forces approaching the shore may need to disperse in order to make it harder for enemy forces to target them. My question is, how does that float? That's crazy how <laughs> that just uh, comes out of the water. Therefore, the notion of a disaggregated yet interwoven attack force less vulnerable to enemy fire will be launched to hit multiple landing points to exploit enemy defenses. This does not mean we give up the bigs. It means we use them more effectively. They are a big part of our ability to project combat power, Kaufman explained. New ships such as future landing craft air cushions, unmanned surface vessels, amphibious combat vehicles, ship launched undersea drones, and even newly upgunned PC boats are expected to That's empower crazy. the emerging strategy to introduce a new, more effective and lethal over the horizon ship to shore attack. Yeah, ability. this this looks like you cannot do anything. Replacements such as now under construction Textron built ship to shore connectors are expected to figure prominently in these anticipated missions. They introduce an unprecedented ability to transport 70 ton Abrams tanks to war and bring an integrated suite of new technologies to amphibious attack missions. That's Execution wild. of this new strategy is, depending upon the threat, also reliant upon fifth generation aircraft, Kaufman said. The Corps F 35B, now operational as part of Marine Corps Air Ground Task Forces aboard the USS Wasp and USS Essex, is this stuff open? To provide close air support to advancing attacks, use its sensors to perform forward reconnaissance and launch strikes itself. The success of an amphibious attack needs or even requires air supremacy. Bro, Extended look at that logic, move. An F 35 would be positioned to address enemy air to air and airborne air to surface threats, such as drones, fighter jets, or even incoming anti ship missiles and ballistic missiles. Okay. The idea would be to use the F-35 in tandem with surveillance drones and other nodes to find and destroy land-based enemy defenses, clearing the way for a land assault. You know how crazy the that is? strategic and conceptual shift is also informed by an increased sea basing focus. Smaller multi-mission vessels, according to this emerging strategy, will be fortified by larger amphibious operating as sovereign entities at safer distances. Kaufman said these ships would operate as seaports, hospitals, logistics warehouses, and sea bases for maneuver forces. 
A 2014... That's smart, though. Marine That's Corps really smart. The professional journal of the U.S. Marine Corps points to sea basing as a foundation upon which the Navy will shift away from traditional amphibious warfare. Mm. Sea-based operations enable Marines to conduct highly mobile, specialized, small unit amphibious landings by stealth from over the horizon at multiple undefended locations of our own choosing, the paper writes. In effect, future ship-to-shore amphibious attacks will look nothing like the more linear, aggregated Iwo Jima assault. A Naval War College essay on this topic both predicts and reinforces Kaufman's thinking. The basic requirements of amphibious assault, long held to be vital to success, may no longer be attainable. Unlike the Pacific landings of World War II, amphibious objective areas could prove impossible to isolate the paper called Blitzkrieg from the Sea, Maneuver Warfare and Amphibious Operations states. The essay, written in the 1980s during the height of the Cold War, seems to anticipate future threats from major power adversaries. You know, that's the crazy part, because back in those days, you literally the ship has to land and everybody runs out. And then you're basically like a sitting duck. You run in towards bullets, pretty much. So now it's like pretty much simple. You're in an armored uh, amphibian tank and then you just go through there. You don't have to worry about those bullets or anything. You just sl simply just go. That's wild. Interestingly, drawing from some elements of a Cold War mentality, the essay foreshadows current great power competition strategy for the Navy as it transitions from more than a decade of counterinsurgency to a new threat environment. In fact, when discussing its now underway distributed lethality strategy, Navy leaders often refer to this need to return its focus upon heavily fortified littoral defenses and open blue water warfare against a near peer adversary as having some roots in the Cold War era. The Naval War College essay also seems to anticipate modern thinking in that it cites landing craft air cushions as fundamental to amphibious warfare, writing that hovercrafts can land at several points along an enemy coastline, seeking out enemy weaknesses and shifting forces. Nice. Landing craft air cushions can access over 70% of the shoreline across the world, Whoa. something the new ship-to-shore connectors will be able to do as well. Wow. Designed with over-the-horizon high speed and maneuverability, these hovercraft are able to travel long distances and land on rocky terrain and drive up onto the shore. Referring to a... You know how crazy that is? Because now you don't even... You can't even hide. The Naval War College essay describes ah. an attack through the lens of finding surface gaps to exploit as a way to bypass or avoid centers of resistance. Having a ship-to-shore connector, which can bring a heavier load of land attack firepower, weapons, and marines, helps enable this identified need to bring assault forces across a wide range of attack locations. That is mad. This, while intended to destroy technologically sophisticated enemies, removes major risks. Russian and Chinese weapons, including emerging fifth-generation fighters, DF-26 anti-ship missiles claim oh to reach 900 God. miles, and rapidly emerging weapons such as drones, lasers, and railguns are a variety of systems of concern. Yo, that's... New Amphibious Attack Platforms. Oh. The effort to integrate large numbers of multi-mission smaller craft naturally hinges upon the continued development of vessels enabled by newer advanced technologies. Textron's upgraded ship-to-shore craft includes lighter weight composite materials, Increased wow, that lift up and real fast. And computer automated control. It aired itself up also, real fast. Look at that. New Rolls Royce engines have more horsepower and specialized aluminum to help control corrosion. Textron engineers also say the ship to shore connector is built with digital flight controls and computer mm. automation to replace the traditional yoke and pedals used by current connectors. As a result, oh onboard computers will quickly calculate relevant details such as wind speed and navigational information, according to Textron information. Jeez. The Navy's 72 existing landing craft air cushions in service since the 80s can only transport up to 60 tons, reach speeds of 36 knots, and travel ranges up to 200 nautical miles from amphibious vehicles. Mm. The first several ship-to-shore connectors, which have been built and launched on the water, bring a new level of computer networking combat power transport technology, and emerging elements of advanced maritime propulsion systems. The new ship-to-shore connectors have also moved to a lower frequency for ship electronics, That's moving crazy. from 400 hertz down to 60 hertz in order to better synchronize ship systems with Navy common standards. 
Along with these properties, the new craft uses hardware footprint reducing advances to lower the number of gearboxes from 8 to 2. As part of this overall attack apparatus, the Corps is preparing to deploy new BAE-built amphibious combat vehicles by this year. By integrating a new, more powerful engine, large weapons, and digitized command, control, communications, computers, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, or C4ISR system, the amphibious combat vehicle is expected to bring new mechanized firepower to amphibious assaults. When oh, so they're already they're just going to add even way more into it, which is already insane. They'll be like, no, nah, we got to add more into it. That's just wild. Compared to the existing amphibious assault vehicle. BAE Systems is now beginning low-rate initial production as part of a Marine Corps plan to build hundreds of the new vehicles. Unlike existing tracked assault amphibious vehicles, amphibious combat vehicles are eight-wheeled vehicles engineered for greater speed, maneuverability, and survivability. That makes By sense. removing the need for torsion bars, a wheeled vehicle such as the assault amphibious vehicle can build a V-shaped hull for additional protection. BAE Systems developers say the Marine Corps went from track to wheeled because of advances in automotive technology, said John mm. Swift, director of amphibious warfare. That makes sense. These vehicles, if upgraded with advanced artificial intelligence-enabled networking and computer technologies, could help identify threats, protect ship-to-shore connectors, and, of course, bring needed firepower to amphibious landings. BAE Systems and the Corps are now preparing to fire weapons at the new vehicle until the live fire attacks achieve total destruction as a way to prepare the vehicle for combat, Swift said. That makes sense. That makes sense. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I forget about that. Kaufman also explained that he envisions unmanned yet networked landing craft air cushions as something which, among other things, can limit risk to Marines from a range of enemy attacks such as deep water mines. Mm. We have significant gaps in our capability to defeat 100,000 Russian and Chinese mines, which will not be laid in shallow water, Kaufman said. When accompanied by a fleet of small attack and reconnaissance vessels, ship-to-shore connectors will operate with more protection from mines and other enemy threats. Damn, okay. While this emerging Navy strategy is, of course, intended to implement a far more effective attack strategy, it's also, by design, intended to save more lives when launching dangerous assaults into heavily defended enemy areas. Okay. Amphibious landings are marked by extremely high costs and heavy casualties and are considered among the riskiest and least desirable operations to conduct, the Marine Corps Association SA maintains. Like how, like now you know where a lot of American tax and pay go is towards the army and the navy and all of that, the military, practically. So I mean, if they're gonna spend all that money on that just to keep you safe, I see why not. I get it. I understand. A lot of people are upset, but like they're just like stacking and just keep advancing over and over, and it's just like mind boggling and in insane to say the least man america just is just wild and different honestly but that's going to be the end of the video guys if you guys enjoy this type of video and you guys want to support me you know what to do subscribe i would greatly appreciate it all right i'll see you guys later peace out